This is Twit. Artificial intelligence. I, you know, this is AI is just a topic that continues to fascinate me because I feel like more and more AI is being touted as the solution to so many problems, right? Uh, so much power, so much potential, so much disruption uh, in its wake. Who, though, does it benefit the most? And the nonprofit Mozilla Foundation actually published a report on Monday that details the winners and the losers of this march toward AI-powered systems. Solana Larson is the editor of the 2022 Internet Health Report and actually joins us now to talk about that report. Welcome, Solana. Thank you. Hi. Hi. It's great to get you here. I love the background. It pops. Looks awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you. Uh, so first of all, this isn't the first Internet Health Report that Mozilla has released. Is this the first one that so heavily uh, discusses or, or dissects the power and the influence of artificial intelligence? Or is this just kind of a now thing? Yeah, this is the first time that we're even just like picking one topic and focusing on just that. Because for the past uh, four editions, this is the fifth edition that we're doing now, we've really taken a broad view of what does it even mean for the internet to be healthy, you know, and healthy for people. Yeah. Um, and thinking of it as being something that can be either unhealthy or healthy as an ecosystem or even both at once. It's really about looking at what are the root causes for things like hate speech or disinformation or, um, you know, the fact that half of the world almost is still not online. Those kinds of big questions about the internet and then thinking about how do we fix them? What are some of the different things that people are actively doing to make things better, make it healthier? And so with AI, I think we have this, this urgency right now, this moment where we see like all of the things that are most unhealthy about the internet, we see that magnified in AI um, and v vice versa. You know, I think there's also a, um, an element of where AI can also make the internet healthier or less healthy as well. So one yeah. topic this year and we go deep. Well, and I think if you're going to pick one do topic to go deep on, and especially at this moment in time, AI really seems ripe for the picking, right? Like I said in the in the kind of the, the top introduction, I feel like artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, all this stuff is being constantly used as the savior, kind of the, the superpower that's being injected into technology. The thing that we didn't have before, and we had all these problems, and then now we've got AI to, to save the day. But this report is really about caution, and uh, it really seems to uh, shed a light on why caution is needed. Maybe explain a little bit of that as AI is used, you know, uh, is presented as this powerful thing that shifts paradigms. What does that, uh, what does that potentially lead to? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It, it's like a system of power in itself, because when you deploy AI to make decisions about things that affects people's lives, you know, that is a system of power that's being exercised. Um, and the other thing that we see is that it's making the ones who have power more powerful. I mean, mm -hmm. it requires an enormous amount of uh, resources to actually use AI at a large scale. So when you look at, for instance, the influence of big tech or how tech is growing uh, big tech is growing more and more powerful. A lot of that has to do with AI. I mean, if you look at a company like like Amazon or any of the other big tech companies, and you look at their, you know, their revenue, and you look at um, how they make money in different ways, AI is is crucial to their business operations in every way. Um, and so, when you have the powerful using this as part of their toolkit. And they're also influencing so much of how we think about how we use it. Like, how do we collect the data that then gets, you know, used in AI systems? Um, how do we how do we behave? What do we expect it to do? When so much of the discourse is also decided by those who have power over it, it becomes this, mm. you know, self reinforcing mechanism where I think it's important to say, hang on. Like, let's step back, let's talk about who has power, who's getting to decide how these things work, um, who's getting to be um, more powerful, uh, you know, with by using these technologies. Yeah, indeed. Now, um, one of the things that's kind of uh, that I've noticed in this this march, you know, down the path of AI over the recent years anyways, 
and potentially a pretty troubling aspect, especially in light of the report, is that much of what's happening behind the scenes is very hidden. And I don't necessarily mean, I mean, p- perhaps, you know, there is technology companies that know a lot but aren't aren't sharing it. But the inherent nature of AI is that the computer, the algorithm itself is making determinations, is making decisions on its own. And, it, you know, it's it's not like a, a batch of code that you can say, oh, this is the code that led to this. It's the system that kind of has has created this. So how does that kind of lack of transparency tie into what you know what you detail in this report? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a, a certain amount of, um, you know, like it's it's made to feel magic or mm-hmm. uh, like a dark art or um, I think sure. there's this. It's all kind of wrapped up in this tendency of excluding people from joining this conversation. You know, like who should be allowed to have an opinion about AI? And when you have, you know, very powerful elite kind of forces signaling you are not smart enough to talk about this or you are not a computer scientist, you cannot talk about this, it gets very difficult to have a discourse. But if I'm experiencing harm from your AI system, then I know something about it that you don't know about it, even if you designed it, even if you're a computer scientist. And so I think it is this um, importance of making the systems more transparent, making them more um, understandable to users themselves so that they can also help control them and gauge them and then have a certain amount of, like I think what we're experiencing right now is just an enormous amount of of hubris about... um, you know, just demanding that people uh, trust that these technologies do the things that they're supposed to be doing. Mm. And then when people say that they aren't, you know, are they actually listened to? Uh, too often, they're not. Um, and and those, are, those are some of the things that we really need to fix. Well, and of course, you know, one one easy uh, example of that is Timnit Gebru uh, at Google, who AI ethicist, uh, computer scientist, working on that algorithmic bias and, you know, inside of Google, inside of Alphabet. And then, of course, you know, had the very big kind of fallout as a result of that, which kind of sheds light on this idea that like big tech knows, you know, is, is creating this system, right? They're, f- they're putting their funding into the academic research that proves this technology is safer and everything. But then when there is a voice inside that calls a warning, uh, something happens to that voice. And, <laughs> and that seems to go counter to this idea of, of bringing ethics into AI, which many would, would agree, and I totally agree, is that now is the time to do that effectively. If it's not done effectively now, what it builds out and develops into later becomes a much bigger hill to climb uh, to overcome if you know if it goes in uh, bad directions. That's exactly right, and it's inside companies where you have people raising the alarm, and it's also outside companies. I mean, you have yeah. groups like Mozilla, you have consumers, you have people on YouTube users, you have, um, and you know, it's not even just in the in the realm of big tech. You also have this you know, predictive policing systems or um, facial Mm. recognition technologies that end up arresting the wrong people. And then you have groups that are saying, your system doesn't work. It's identifying the wrong people. And then, you know, if the response is just, well, you know, that's too bad for them, you know, then (laughs) where does that take us? You know, I think we're implementing more and more of these technologies in more and more crucial um, parts of society, and it's not just in the United States or in Europe or in like it's everywhere in everywhere. the entire world. Everybody's doing this, and it's in every single um, business, you know, type. Every every kind of uh, sector, business sector, is affected by AI. Every government is using AI in some way or other. Um, it's you know changing how we deal with communication and information. So we need to talk about this together differently and come to some better ways and mechanisms of of making sure that it doesn't harm people. Yeah, no question. I mean, the systems, a lot of the systems that, you know, we talk about on this network, you know, have to do with like uh, YouTube and then the recommendation engines and everything. And I mean, I can speak to YouTube, you know, AI working behind the scenes for for its recommendation. Let's be honest, those systems often take, uh, you know, actual people 
into a place that they regret going eventually. And like it, maybe it wasn't their choice or the, the recommendation algorithm, you know, is spun up on this idea that like, you know, just as one example, outrage gets attention. Outrage keeps people connected. And so there they end up, you know, being presented with this content that uh, they didn't want. But now it's it's like they've been pulled into this this realm where they of course they're uh, they're interacting and engaging with it because it's you know, because it's it's not good where they ended up and they don't either don't want to be there or they're engaging with it because now suddenly they know this thing exists and uh, how culpable is the technology, is the AI behind the scenes that does that. Um, there's incentive there though, right? Like that's that's kind of the challenge, the tricky part is companies have the incentive to keep people engaged. And so these systems are doing what they're designed to do. Uh, what What do you think about that? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it would be it would be possible th there would be possible for for things to work better for everybody. I think I mean, there yeah. there would be ways to work together with the research community and multilingual research communities in different parts of the world to try and figure out um, how to make these systems work in ways that are better. Um, but for that to happen, these companies need to open up and need to share information in a way that makes it possible to collaborate with them and to have research that's happening from the outside. We have a, a crowdsourcing um, plugin, actually, it's called YouTube Regrets, but it's a um, an add-on, a browser add-on extension, I think, is it? I know, so many yeah. words. Um, a browser yeah, extension words. that you can download into your browser and then you can um, share your information about YouTube videos that you're watching. And then when one comes up that you regret having seen, um, we can analyze what was the path that took you there? Um, was it a recommendation? Was it something else? Let's try and reverse engineer some of these algorithms that the big companies aren't being transparent about. And there's a number of projects like that from different organizations that are trying to, you know, from the outside, figure out what is the scale of the harm? How do we document it? How can we fix it? How can we come up with constructive solutions for making systems that work better for everybody? Um, you know, so yeah, we need, they have, I believe they have incentives to make these systems work better for everybody. We clearly need to make the incentives uh, stronger, you know, and maybe that happens through regulation. Maybe that happens through consumer action. Um, but if we leave uh, the, the companies to their own devices, it's clearly not going to happen um, because yeah. they found a way to make a lot of money without doing all those things. Yeah, yeah, no question. Um, before we wrap things up, I also want to point out that this is not just a report this time around. You also launched a podcast to go along with it. So congratulations on that. Tell us a little bit about the podcast so people can check it out. Yes, now we can be podcast friends. <laughs> That's right. Podcast. <laughs> we already are. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast is called IRL. Um, and it's actually a, a podcast that the Firefox uh, team created and ran for several years. And yeah, we've taken it over for the special edition, which kind of, we ask in the report, we ask like who has power over AI? And then the, the, the podcast responds, you know, and we show people in different parts of the world who are doing things differently, you know, who are designing things in a totally different way than we've become accustomed to and we just take for granted now. And I think it will open people's eyes and say, oh yeah, we could be doing things like this or wow, <laughs> um, you know, Let's hear it from people who are building differently. You know, let's not get so scared of AI that, that we're just say, saying that it's all bad. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's not that we need to trash it. We just need to think about it differently. We need to research it differently and develop other incentives and create things that can actually benefit uh, humanity. Uh, but that does require, you know, starting from a different uh, starting point than we have so far. Yeah, critical analysis is key and important at the point that we're at right now. And uh, this report definitely does a great job of pointing that out. Solana Larson, of course, the editor of the 2022 Internet Health Report for Mozilla Foundation. Solana, if people want to find you and follow you online and the work that you're doing behind the scenes, where can they find you? Well, the, the internethealthreport.org, um, this year's edition, 2022.internethealth. Um, report.org and uh, yeah the Mozilla Foundation we're doing lots of work lots of research beyond the report activism if you want to get involved if you want to learn more and do things on these issues then you know come find us and and connect for sure excellent Solana thank you so much for carving out a few minutes for us today we really appreciate it 
It was delightful. Thank you.